Hi, this is Lara with your weekly update for US soil for the trading week ending Friday 23rd of February. The outlook for my analysis for oil will remain bearish while price remains below 66.65, but if we see a new high above that price point, the last swing high, by any amount at any time frame, the outlook would change to quite bullish, well very bullish. For the short term for oil, I'm expecting a little bit more upward movement early next week and after that I'm expecting a trend change and downward movement, a new big wave down. The long term target is still at 13.39. Let's do classic analysis first this week. At the monthly chart level for oil, while price is rising here, it's coming with an increase in volume. This month here was an upward month that had a high high and a higher low. But it, the candlesticks closed red and the balance of volume for that month was downward. Downward movement during this month had good strong support from volume. So from a volume perspective, the strongest month in recent months is downward movement. And so that would look reasonably bearish. Here there were three advancing white soldiers. That's a bullish continuation pattern. It was followed by another two months of good strong upward movement. This last one with a slightly longer upper wick is slightly bearish. Now so far for the month of February we've got three more trading days before it's complete. If it continues to look like this it may end up as a hanging man candlestick pattern. However the bullish implication of the long lower wick on a hanging man reversal pattern which is seen at market highs means that a hanging man pattern really does need the following candlestick to be bearish and provide some bearish confirmation. A hanging man candlestick pattern really is one of two candlesticks for a proper reversal pattern because it needs that confirmation. So we'd have to wait until March is complete before we can have any conclusion about that. I'm not going to make any conclusion about February's volume because it's incomplete, but January's volume upward month showed support from volume for upward movement, so that's bullish. MACD is bullish and on balance volume is very bullish at the monthly chart level. What about the shorter term picture at the daily chart level? Here was an advanced block candlestick pattern and a bearish long upper wick. It did lead to the next two days making lower lows, but this is a very strong bullish candlestick pattern with a bullish long lower wick and now we've got another bullish candlestick pattern. It looks like price is going to continue higher at least for the short term. Look out for resistance about 64.90 and up above that we have next resistance up around here the previous swing highs about 66.6. .6. While price is rising, overall volume is declining, although we do have a good strong volume spike for this day here. That was this day here with that long upper wick. ADX at the daily chart time, daily time frame tells us that at this stage there is no clear trend after the previous upward trend reaching very extreme. The black ADX line now is strongly declining. And the positive and negative DX lines, a little bit of whipsawing there. So that tells us there's either a potential trend change to upward, but it doesn't tell us yet that there is again a new upward trend. ATR was rising as price was starting to fall, and now as price is rising, it's starting to level off. Overall, we may be seeing some strength again finally return to this market after very low and light ATR for quite some time, which, while overall price was rising, was somewhat bearish. There was a bit of a lack of strength in that upward movement. There's been no recent signals from on balance volume at the daily chart level to be of any use. RSI and stochastics both in neutral territory, which tell us that there's plenty of room for the market to rise or fall. Bollinger bands were expanding to put to support the last downward movement and now they're offering a little bit of contraction on this towards the, this piece of upward movement so we may be seeing a tiring upward bounce. Like I said I'm expecting from these candlesticks this is quite bullish I wouldn't expect it to be over right there. I'd be waiting to see a red candlestick, a doji or a candlestick with a long upper wick before I expected there'd be a high in place and I'll be looking for resistance about 64.90. What about the Elliott wave count? At the monthly, monthly chart level, this is a very bearish Elliott wave count. I've got an alternate, which is very bullish. This Elliott wave count sees a zigzag downward incomplete, subdividing 5, 3, 5, 
so I could see an impulse, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2 and 4 at primary degree are both zigzags, but there is some alternation in depth. Primary 2 was very deep, a 0.94 length of primary 1. Primary 4 relatively shallow, a 0.47 depth in relation to primary 3. Primary 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory. The final, full and final invalidation point for this wave count is 74.96. That rule is black and white. Any amount by any time frame above that invalidation point would mean this wave count should be properly invalidated and discarded. To the downside, if primary 5 were to reach only a quality in length with primary 1, it would be hugely truncated. If it were to reach 1.618 the length of primary 1, it would be slightly truncated. So I'm using the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence. Well, it can't reach 2.618 the length of primary 1. That would take us into negative price territory. And so the next ratio would be where it would reach 0.618 the length of primary 3. That doesn't have a high probability. It's not a very common ratio for a fifth wave to exhibit. And so when there's more structure within this fifth wave specifically, when there is intermediate waves 1, 2, 3 and 4 complete, then I'll calculate the target at intermediate degree. For now, I can just calculate it at primary degree. I would also be expecting good strong support at the lower edge of this Elliott channel that's drawn around this downward zigzag. Let's look at the structure of primary 4 at the weekly chart level with the end of primary 3. It would be this point here. Primary 4, a zigzag, subdividing 5. 3, 5. Intermediate wave C, now a complete 5 wave impulse. This downward movement could be the start of primary wave 5. Let's have a look at this at the daily chart level where primary wave 4 up here is this point up here. We could have a 5 down for minor 1 and possibly a double zigzag, a bounce for minor wave 2. For US oil, the first second wave correction within a new wave is usually really deep. I'm just going to go very quickly back to this. This is typical behaviour, so it seems for US oil. This is a very, very deep second wave correction, 0.94 the depth of primary one. And again, intermediate wave two is very deep in comparison here to intermediate wave one. And so no surprises here that minor wave two could very well again be very deep. That's typical behaviour for US oil. The first one or two in a series of second wave corrections within its new trends can often be very deep. Intermediate wave, sorry, minor wave 2 is not subdividing as a single zigzag. We can't label this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for A and then expect B and C because 4 would overlap what would be wave 1 price territory. That's why I'm labelling it as a double zigzag. It could be a 5, 3, 5, the first zigzag in the double, labelled minute W. The double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction, labelled X, which for a double zigzag is typically brief and shallow. And now I'd be expecting another 5, 3, 5 zigzag up for minute wave Y. So when minute wave Y is complete, I would expect it to look like a zigzag, like minute wave W does at the daily chart level. So I'd be expecting 1, 2 or 3 downward days within this, along the way up. I'm not expecting it to move up in a straight line. I expect though it's fairly likely to find good strong resistance at the lower edge of this best fit channel. I drawn from the start of intermediate C along these lows here and it beautifully contained all this upward movement. We may be looking at a bounce to retest resistance at prior support. That may be what minor wave 2 is doing. It may not move beyond the start of 1, above 66.65. Those Elliott Wave rules are black and white. Any movement by any amount at any time frame above this point is enough to fully invalidate this wave count at the daily chart level. At that stage, I'd have to consider the possibility could, intermediate, sorry, could primary wave 4 be continuing higher, and that looks quite problematic from an Elliott Wave point of view. To the downside, we can have some reasonable confidence in this wave count if we see a new low below 55.24 because that's the point at which this alternate would be invalid. What if the zigzag was over here, subdividing 5, 3, 5? Now I'm seeing cycle B over here rather than at the swing high here. It's a zigzag subdividing A, B, C with a 9 wave triangle for primary wave B. It's a running contracting triangle. Primary C is not truncated, it does move beyond the end of primary A, it just doesn't make a new price extreme beyond the territory of primary wave B. The tr term truncation refers to where C ends in relation to A, not where C ends in relation to B. 
and so cycle B certainly could have been over here and now cycle wave C looks like a really good five wave impulse. At the monthly chart level this wave count actually has a pretty good look. It's possible oil could have a low and it could be in the early stages relatively of a huge new bull market. We would need to see a clear five up at the monthly chart level. So far we'd only have primary one and two. Let's look at how primary three may be beginning from this low here. This point here and now intermediate wave one and two and now intermediate three complete. Intermediate wave four. This is all only within cycle one. So when cycle one is complete we'd be expecting a deep second wave correction for cycle two. But we still have to see a five up complete for cycle wave one first. Couple of problems with this wave count though. Intermediate wave one doesn't have a very good look as a five wave structure. This part of the wave count seems really forced from this low to this high. This really does look very strongly like a three wave structure. Trying to see it as a five really is pushing it. Intermediate wave two is much longer in duration than primary wave two one degree higher as well. Giving the wave count an odd look. This just doesn't really have a very good fit when we get down to the weekly chart level. That's all from me with your US oil analysis this week. I hope all of our members and viewers are having a fabulous weekend. I'm still expecting overall an upward swing to continue to end above 1361.46. The target is at 1375 where there's some strong resistance. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. At the weekly chart level I've got five wave counts. To see all of these different wave counts you'll have to go back to the historic analysis. I'm only going to publish two on a daily basis, one bullish and one bearish, so that the analysis is manageable for me to publish and digestible for you to read. My wave counts, almost all of them, see a five wave structure ending down here at the last big low in December 2015. This is where cycle wave A may have ended and cycle wave B may have begun. This first wave count looks at cycle wave B as a possible zigzag which would subdivide 5, 3, 5. Primary C within the zigzag may be only an impulse or a diagonal and all of this overlapping strongly suggests an ending diagonal. The diagonal may be expanding. So far we may have a zigzag for 1 and 2 and 3 is a zigzag that's longer than 1, 4 a zigzag that's longer than 2 so if this is correct we'd be expecting a zigzag up for 5 which should be longer than 3 and so it should end above 1398.41 because that's the point at which it would reach equality in length with 3. Within an ending diagonal all of the subwaves must subdivide as zigzags and the fourth wave must overlap first wave price territory. The rules for diagonals are different to the rules for a simple impulse. When you're doing Elliott Wave analysis and you expect a diagonal is unfolding, it's a convention within Elliott Wave to put the trend lines on the diagonal so that other analysts may know your intention. For an ending diagonal, for sorry, for an expanding diagonal, the trend lines must diverge. Within the fifth wave of this possible ending expanding diagonal, the B wave for minor B may not move beyond the start of A below 1236.54. Let's have a look at this at the daily chart level now where the low for intermediate 4 is this point down here. This is where the final zigzag of the diagonal may have begun for intermediate 5, subdividing 5, 3, 5. It is possible that minor B was over here. I have that as a second alternate wave count at the hourly chart level. If minor B is over here, then minor C of the zigzag for intermediate 5 would have begun here and so far we'd have a first and a second wave correction probably complete. But I'm not labelling that on my daily chart because I think it has a low probability because when I look at the duration and size of the B waves within the previous zigzags at the weekly chart level it would be remarkably brief and shallow if minor wave B were to be over here. What looks much more likely is that it should continue sideways for a few more weeks to be a big obvious three wave structure. There are still multiple structural possibilities for minor wave B and it's still impossible for me to tell you with any reasonable confidence at all which of those multiple structures it may be unfolding as. It could still be a flat combination, triangle or even a single or double zigzag. From this high to this low, I think this downward wave here subdivides best as a 3, but it will also fit as a 5. 
If it's a three, this may be wave A of a flat or triangle, or wave W of a double zigzag or double combination. If this is wave A of a flat, then this high here could possibly be a complete B, although I think that's less likely than minute B is continuing, but it could be a B wave of a flat correction because it's now met the minimum requirement of 90% the length of the A wave. And so this high up here meeting that minimum requirement means that all structural options are still open for minor wave B. The labelling and the arrows on this daily chart outline one possible pathway of several, a very likely pathway because it's a really common structure, that of an expanded flat subdividing 3, 3, 5. Within an expanded flat, the B wave ends beyond the start of the A wave. Also, within a running triangle, minute B could end beyond the start of minute A, making a new high above this point here. That's why there's no upper invalidation point. A more classic analysis, technical analysis way of looking at this is to see it as a range-bound consolidation with swings from resistance to support and back again. And when price moves within a consolidation from resistance to support and back again, it pretty much never does it in a straight line. It's choppy and overlapping just like this. At this stage, I expect we're looking at a zigzag unfolding upward, subdividing 5, 3, and then we need a 5 up for minuet C to move beyond the end of A. At the weekly chart level, this is a very bearish wave count. It looks still at the possibility that cycle A was a complete five wave structure and here cycle B could be unfolding as a flat correction, subdividing three, incomplete three, and then we'd be expecting a big five up to move beyond the end of A to avoid a truncation. If primary B is continuing, then it should be a flat correction, subdividing three, three, five, and if cycle B, the structure one degree higher also is a flat correction then within it primary B must meet a minimum requirement of 0.9 the length of primary A at 1079.13 so you can't label primary A as a 3 and primary B as a 3 complete here that's invalid because that would be a flat correction and if B is over here it's less than 90% the length of A so B can't be over there if we're looking at a bigger flat correction, B has to be continuing further as a regular flat. The target would see intermediate C reach 1.618, the length of intermediate A, which would achieve the minimum requirement for primary B to reach down to 0.9, the length of primary A. Intermediate C should be a five wave structure unfolding lower. This wave counts very bearish and essentially needs a downward breakout. It needs a new low below 1236.54 before we can have any reasonable confidence in it. At the weekly chart level it looks like we might be seeing a small pennant pattern unfolding but so far it's lasted four weeks in duration. That's about the maximum duration you really expect for a pennant. If it does continue any longer then I shouldn't be labelling it a pennant, it should be a symmetrical triangle. While pennants are pretty reliable continuation patterns, symmetrical triangles can be either reversal or continuation patterns. So if it continues further then an upward breakout from this pattern would be not we, we couldn't be as confident of it. This pennant seems to have resistance about 1375 and support about 1305 to 1310. Price is swinging from resistance to support and back again. While it's doing so, overall volume is showing some decline. That's fairly normal for a consolidation. On balance volume, the last signal it gave here was bullish. A bounce off support here also bullish. So we have to read on balance volume at this stage on balance is bullish, which would mean we'd be expecting an upward breakout more likely than downward. And the strongest volume within the recent weeks is for an upward week. It's a little bit more support to the idea, possibly, of an upward breakout above 1375 eventually. ADX is now increasing, it's above 15, it indicates there's an upward trend, it's still in the early stages, so that supports again the idea of an upward breakout, that all supports the main Elliott Wave count. ATR has been declining for a very long time, long term there is some weakness, we're just starting in the last few, very few weeks to see a little bit of an improvement, not enough yet to say that overall decline is probably complete, or rather halted, and we're seeing a real increase. RSI is neutral, plenty of room for price to rise or fall, stochastics also back into neutral territory, 
plenty of room for price to rise or fall. Stochastics can remain overbought for reasonable periods of time when gold has a strong bullish trend. Here's our resistance about 1360. There's resistance above, as you see on the weekly chart, about 1375, and good strong support now about 1310 to 1305. Price swinging from resistance to support and back again. ADX declining, telling us at this time frame, at the daily chart level, we have a consolidation. During the consolidation, it's downward days which have strongest volume, which would suggest for the short term a downward breakout from the smaller consolidation. Now that doesn't mean the bigger picture at the weekly chart level has to also expect a downward breakout. That would just be expecting a downward breakout from here and then a move back down to lower support down about here. So it's fractal. We're looking at a smaller fractal here. We've got downward movement from price and we've got declining volume. Last couple of days essentially really moving price sideways. So price is winding up for a bigger movement. The short term average is now negatively sloped and price is below it. The mid and long term average is still positively sloped and price is above it. So that would indicate a short term pullback within a mid and longer term upward trend. On balance volume at the weekly chart level was giving bullish signals. Also at the daily chart level, here's a bullish signal. This is a reasonable signal. This line has some reasonable slope, but it's not too steep. And it was tested four times before on balance volume, volume broke above it and is now coming down to test support. Let us expect that in the first instance, it's likely that support will hold. That may assist to halt the fall in price down here and push price upward back up toward resistance. RSI is neutral, as is stochastics, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. Bollinger Band's now steady as price is essentially moving sideways. That's normal behaviour for them during a consolidation. And MACD's been whipsawing, also quite normal during a consolidation. The trend still remains up. My mid to long term target, or a target for a reasonable interruption to the trend, is 3020. A short term target for another little short term pullback is 2920. Classic analysis favours upward movement next week, which supports the main Elliott wave count. Elliott wave first, classic analysis last. At the weekly chart level, I'm still seeing a cycle degree fourth wave over here and a cycle degree fifth wave beginning here. Cycle five is subdividing as an impulse. It can only be either an impulse or an ending diagonal and there's not enough overlapping for a diagonal to meet the rules, so it's an impulse, which is the more common structure for a fifth wave. So far, this impulse subdivides 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, complete. We now need 5 up to complete primary 3, and then another big fourth wave correction for primary 4, and a final fifth wave up toward the final targets. The first target is now looking woefully inadequate. The second target is favoured. Cycle 5 passed equality in length with cycle 1 about 2500. That's the most common Fibonacci ratio for a fifth wave to exhibit when the third wave is extended and the first wave isn't, as is the case within Super Cycle 5. When it passed equality in length with cycle 1, then the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence was used for the next target. If we get up to about 2926 and the structure remains incomplete, or if price just keeps on going up through this target, then we'll use the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence where cycle 5 equals 2.618 times the length of cycle 1 at 3616. That's my preferred target now. At this stage, it looks very likely that Intermediate Wave 4 is complete here. It's much quicker in terms of duration than Intermediate Wave 2, but because it's travelled such a big distance in terms of price, it has good proportion at the weekly and monthly timeframes, and it shows up nicely on the monthly chart. It looks very much like Intermediate 4 is over here, but we do have to accept the possibility that it could continue further. If it did, it may continue further as a triangle, which would just be sideways movement. That would be the most likely structure for it to be continuing as. It can't move into Wave 1 price territory below 2193.81. Let's take a look at the daily chart now. We're Intermediate 3. There's this point up here, Intermediate 4, a quick sharp zigzag. Intermediate 5 now underway most likely. It may only subdivide as an impulse or an ending diagonal. The target is for it to reach 0.618 times the length of Intermediate Wave 3 at 3020. 
At this stage, we can't tell if it's an impulse or a diagonal. If overlapping starts to indicate a diagonal, then I'll chart and publish that. But for now, let's expect the much more common structure of a simple impulse. So far, we may have minor 1 complete here, minor 2, a little bull flag pattern, and minor 3 beginning on Friday with upward movement, which was what was expected from the main Elliott wave count after last analysis. I have an extremely unlikely alternate that looks at the possibility minor 2 may not be over and may continue a bit further. If it does continue, then it can't move beyond the start of 1, below 2532.69, but it looks very, very likely to be over at Thursday's low. At the daily chart level, this is an alternate idea. It's absolutely identical in how I'm labelling all, all of the subdivisions to the main wave count. I'm just moving degree of labelling within the zigzag down one degree. This could have just been wave A of a flat or triangle for intermediate 4 or wave W of a double combination or double zigzag for intermediate 4. Of all of those structural possibilities which are still open for intermediate 4 to continue, a double zigzag is the least likely because that what that is the structure of intermediate wave 2 and we should assume, until proven otherwise, we should assume that intermediate 4 will most likely exhibit alternation in structure. So all those other possibilities, a flat combination or triangle, are all sideways movements. In order for price to remain above the 200 day moving average and within the best fit channel, only a triangle is really going to meet those requirements. So it is possible that we could just see choppy overlapping sideways movement for a few more weeks to complete a triangle for intermediate wave 4. If intermediate 4 is continuing, then we may be looking at a zigzag unfolding upward, subdividing 5, 3, 5. You'll notice that 5, 3, 5 for a zigzag subdivides exactly the same way as 1, 2, 3 of an unfolding impulse. And so there's no difference in terms of subdivisions. The only difference really is in looking at the strength of this wave. If this upward wave, which subdivides 5, 3, 5, particularly this next piece, the 5 up, which I'm labelling here minute c, if it exhibits some good weakness, if it's got very light and declining volume, and at highs, if there are bearish signals with divergence for, between price and stochastics and price and RSI, then I would expect it could be a B or X wave. But on the other hand, if we see strength or bullish signals, particularly bullish signals from the AD line, then I will discard this idea. If we see strength in this next upward wave, it would most likely be a third wave and not a C wave to end a B wave or X wave zigzag. So it's the strength of this upward movement which will differentiate this alternate wave count from the main wave count, not this Elliott wave subdivisions. Last week, volume didn't support upward movement. This week, we've got a further decline in volume as price has moved higher. But light and declining volume on rising price has been a fairly consistent feature of this market for quite a long time. It doesn't mean, here's an example, declining volume on rising price, yet we got another three, four weeks of upward movement after it. And another example here, very light volume on, on rising price, and yet we got another strong upward week afterward here. And so this lack of support from volume being a consistent feature of this market at all time frames now for quite, well, for quite a few years means that I'm not going to give too much weight to this light volume this week. We could certainly see further upward movement next week. We've got a bullish long lower wick on this weekly candlestick. On balance volume remains bullish. RSI is still well into neutral territory. There's plenty of room for price to rise or fall. And ADX, a lagging indicator, is telling us that the prior very, very extreme upward trend may have now ended. We may be in a consolidation, but it's based on a 14-week average. So if we do have a new upward trend, it's going to take a few weeks to catch up. It told us back here we had a potential trend change from up to down. It hasn't told us that we've got a trend change back to up. But again, it's a lagging indicator. What about the daily chart for the shorter term picture? It looks like we've got a flag pattern here. And these are one of the most reliable continuation patterns. It looks like Friday's close above the upper edge of the flag pattern may be an upward breakout. Normally you'd want to see a support from volume for an upward breakout. We don't have that here. That's a slight 
cause for concern, but as I explained on the weekly chart, my concern is only small because this has been a feature for a long time of this market, rising price on light and declining volume. We've got a nice strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, it's above this real body so that's very very bullish. It fully engulfs this real body and this real body, so that's a strong bullish pattern. Look out for next resistance about 2770 and above that about 2820. ADX for the prior upward trend reached very extreme. Very extreme is when it's above 35 and above both directional lines. This pullback managed to pull ADX down very briefly showed us there was an upward trend which then reached extreme and now this upward bounce is pulling ADX down further, it's still not back below both directional lines, so this, it again is a lagging indicator and after this little few downward days here for this flag pattern it's going to take a while for ADX to catch up. So far ADX is telling us that we may have a consolidation or it's waiting to catch up to a new trend but at this stage it tells us there may be a consolidation. As price is rising ATR is flattening off and starting to actually decline a little, that's again another feature of this bull market, it does have some weakness in terms of ATR and volume. On balance volume is bullish, it made a new high here above this prior here, that was a strong bullish signal, we're getting more upward movement. If on balance volume makes a new high above this point that would be another bullish signal, I've drawn a new resistance line, it's quite weak, it's only just able to be drawn. If on balance volume were to break above that, that would be another bullish signal. For now I'm reading on balance volume is quite bullish. RSI at the daily chart level also in neutral territory, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. Stochastics also still in neutral territory, plenty of room for price to rise or fall. MACD on Friday giving us a bullish crossover. Bollinger Bands now contracting, this is pretty typical behaviour, either during a consolidation or in the early stages of a new trend. What about VIX in the AD line? Inverted VIX, I am leading now, oh, sorry, I am reading inverted VIX now as a leading indicator in line with the AD line. Inverted VIX has made a new high here. The upward movement in price comes with a decline in market volatility, but market volatility has declined below the point it was up here, yet price has not made a follow through corresponding new high. If inverted VIX is a leading indicator then that's a bullish signal. Likewise the AD line, I'm on firmer ground here, I've got more confidence in how I'm interpreting this. I, the AD line has made a new high above this prior point of the 16th of February, this swing high. Market breadth has improved beyond this prior point but price has not yet followed through with this new all time, sorry, with a new swing high above this point. The improvement in market breadth, if it's read as a leading indicator, should pull price up and so that's bullish and both the inverted VIX and the AD line support the main Elliott wave count and my expectations for more upward movement next week. That's all for me at the end of the trading week with your S&P analysis and I hope all our members and viewers are having a fabulous weekend.